There is no symbol more indicative of the American culture and history than the firearm. The firearm was the instrument of revolution for this country and its status as an icon for freedom is more prominent and tangible than any bald eagle or even flag in the American consciousness. Guns are often seen as the great equalizer. A gun doesn't care whether you are a young woman or an old man. When that rifle hits your fingertips, the social divisions melt away into only two classes, those with and without. Yet despite just how important guns are to the 21st century, most people know extremely little about the specifics of them. Welcome to Engineering Plus, where our mission is to provide you with quality content that helps you understand engineering, the building block of civilization. Now, how do firearms actually function? What are the actual firing processes and mechanisms behind the weapon that make it tick? Well, all guns stemming from the very first Chinese fire lances that shot fireworks out of the sides of spears, all the way to the modern day AK-47s and pump action shotguns, all have the exact same basic components in all of their firing mechanisms. These components consist of first, a projectile which historically may have been fireworks or metal fragments and it is the component that comes out of the gun. Secondly, the barrel. This is the part of the gun where the bullet is ejected out from or the channel that a projectile needs to find its way out of. Then the propellant. This is almost universally gunpowder and is responsible for launching the projectile at extreme speeds. And finally, an ignition agent is needed to set off the process. All modern day guns function on this simple system, and understanding this makes it infinitely easier to understand them. Very early guns such as the European Serpentine gun utilized the matchlock firing mechanism. To be very extremely blunt, this antiquated firing system works by having the very end of the barrel filled with the propellant or gunpowder through the muzzle, the front of the gun. Then the projectile, being a bullet in the case of the matchlock, was also rammed in with a stick usually through the front. Then the ignition source, which would often be an extremely long burning fuse, was controlled by a switch called the matchlock. Upon the press of a lever, this burning fuse is like tapped onto the gunpowder propellant through a hole in the side of the gun called the flash pan. Once it's ignited, the gunpowder propellant launches your bullet. Contrary to popular belief, gunpowder does not explode. It just burns extremely hot and quickly. However, if gunpowder does not explode, then how is it projecting the projectile? For now, just pretend that the gunpowder magically pushes out the bullet, which surprisingly isn't that far from the truth. Modern guns use a combination of a hammer or a striker that is spring-loaded. This forces huge amounts of potential energy into the springs. Pulling the trigger releases this energy and allows that hammer to slam onto a primer, which is another piece. This ignites the back of a bullet and is the modern equivalent of an ignition source. This is important. All modern gun firing mechanisms, except Gauss rifles, which are a whole different story, are based on the same basic concept of igniting a propellant and it's slowly exploding-ish or slowly burning in order to launch a projectile. Keep this in mind as we jump into some more complex and cool examples of modern firearms technology in action. These modern firing mechanisms are so numerous and plentiful, it is actually magnificent how many different marvels of engineering humanity has created in order to launch a bullet out of a gun. For our purposes, these firing mechanisms can be categorized into single shot, repeating, and automatic action firing mechanisms, something that should sound familiar to gun shooting enthusiasts. Let's start with the most infamous of the single shot action firing mechanisms, the bolt action rifle. There's many different types of bolt action systems, so specifically, I will be giving insight into the world's most common and most popular bolt action weapon system, the Mauser. This bolt action weapon system is almost entirely controlled by, predictably, a bolt slide. This is responsible for 99% of the gun's firing process, from loading ammunition, to retrieving cases, to shooting the gun. Here is an example firing process. So you pull the bolt back and upwards. This opens the chamber where you place in an unused bullet cartridge, or, you know, to not sound so fancy, just a bullet. Then you slide the bolt back in place, which is ingenious because it not only pushes the bullet into place, it also seals the chamber, and as I'll explain in a second, acts as a firing pin. 
So when you hit the trigger to fire the gun, that bolt switches from bullet transportation system to the ignition source we mentioned way back in the video. The firing pin strikes the back of the bullet cartridge, which ignites the gunpowder that is contained in the back of the bullet. This gunpowder is the propellant that launches the bullet down the barrel with that magic-ish thing that we talked about earlier. So how does gunpowder launch a bullet if it doesn't explode? What is this magic force I was talking about? We know that it can't explode because obviously that would cause serious harm to the user, especially with modern day guns often being made out of plastic like they aren't made of metal and wood anymore necessarily. An explosion created by gunpowder could be extremely dangerous. But what if I told you that guns didn't work by exploding gunpowder, that they worked by heating up extremely fast? When gunpowder is ignited, it doesn't actually explode, it gets hot extremely fast, which is a minor difference but a key one. This heat creates a massive buildup of gas inside of the gun, which forces the bullet down the path of least resistance, being the end of the barrel. I hope this clarifies the common misconception. Now let's move on to the repeating action systems. Specifically, we will be diving into the specifics of the mechanics that make up the pump action repeating shotguns. In our example, I will be giving insight into the mechanics of the Winchester Model 12 repeating action shotgun. After looking at video after video studying the mechanics of the pump action shotgun, the level of innovation undergone to make the entire process work is actually amazing. Let's start from the ground up and work our way from there. I want to start with the firing process of the shotgun. So we are sort of starting in the middle here, but this makes things much easier to understand later on. How do we get from squeezing on the trigger to a slug firing at the end of the barrel at 1,500 feet per second? It's actually simple. As soon as you click the trigger on a shotgun, a cocked hammer hits the back of a firing pin, which ignites a bullet in your gun. Just as simple as the previous example. The pump action system begins by loading bullets into the side of the gun, which is relatively standard, yet it should be mentioned that very few pump action shotguns use magazines, but there are examples out there, such as the Remington. As the bullets are loaded in with your fingers usually, it, is co it compresses a conveniently named magazine spring. It is then closed by a little tab with a round circle in it called the cartridge cutoff. Now you have your projectiles and propellant in one loaded into your gun. After the gun is fired with our customary ignition agent known as the firing pin, spring pressure is put on the area of the pump action weapon known as the slide lock. This is where the famous shotgun cock is about to come in. The purpose of the pump in firing the mechanism is actually brilliant as the pump controls the entire system, similar to the bolt. Pulling back on the rounded slab of wood releases the pressure on the slide lock and pulls back the spent case of the bullet back into the gun's chamber where it is kicked off to the side, leaving an empty space. This void, this empty space is not long for the world because as the pump is moved forward, one of the previous bullets is kicked upwards into the chamber and loaded into the barrel, and the gun is functionally reset. This is all the groundwork that goes into making your favorite weapons function. Finally, we are going to end our examination of gun systems by looking at the almost legendary automatic firing mechanisms of the AK-47. To gun nerds, this will provide an example of a gas-operated long-stroke gas piston system. Automatic weapons are so neat, not only because they are spewing out hundreds of rounds a minute, but because they are able to carry out the gargantuan task of not only getting the bullet out of the barrel, but recocking the hammer, ejecting the shell from the gun, and loading a new bullet into the barrel often several times a second. So how does the AK-47 accomplish this with like no added aid of electricity? Well, it's in the name. Inside of the live ammunition of the AK-47 is not only gunpowder and the actual metal shard. Instead of electricity or a pump, when the firing pin strikes the back of the bullet after it is loaded in and all that jazz, the gas propels the bullet out of the barrel. But there is one added feature that allows the entire system to work. Carved into the upper segment of the rifle near the end of the barrel, there is a passage that some concentrated gas flows up into. This gas pushes onto a long metal spindle known as the gas piston at the top of the gun, pushing the piston slide backwards and causing recoil. This piston continues to slide backward until it hits the oddly shaped bolt of the system and the piston pushes it along with it. 
the bolt sliding backwards allows for new bullets to be loaded into the chamber. The long stroke system is excellent because with the added addition of the huge piston, it requires less cleaning compared to a direct impingement system which doesn't have the piston there. It just has gas flow up into the cavity above and hit the bolt. That about ends our examination into the different metal parts. Now for my little plug-in at the end. Hello everyone, it's me, the one man army sort of guy behind this engineering plus effort. I hope you like this video, I put a lot of time in it, if there's any inaccuracies let me know. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, you can check out the recommended tab on the right where you can see some other creators out there, I would recommend Real Engineering, he's a huge inspiration for me. So again to conclude, the purpose of this channel Engineering Plus is to share quality engineering content throughout the YouTube community. I hope you enjoy.